recent studies that have been done and even reports from uh, the Gender Monitoring Office, they all show that uh, the gender digital divide still exists in Rwanda. I didn't know anything to do with codes at all, like whatsoever. It was, it was my first time dealing with IT. I would never worked with any, any field related to IT, so it was learning a whole new language. That was a challenge for me. I think technology is scary for many of us, um, women in particular, because uh, a lot of us aren't as exposed, right? Uh, traditionally, women aren't very tech savvy, or at least they're not perceived to be. I, I think also that the vision of becoming a technology-centric economy is very important for a small country that um, has, in some sense, limited physical resources, but it actually has the best resource, and it's called human resource. The world we're getting into, like the years that are coming by, like it's, we're, we're getting into like a technology world completely. Uh, today, we, we see how technology is driving the entire uh, entire global ecosystem or global economy. So it is a no-brainer really uh, to put money where uh, global economic systems are moving and ICT is one of those drivers. Recode is an initiative that is uh, in partnership between PSF, uh, GIZ and implementing partners um, to really create a, an industry that doesn't yet exist in Rwanda and it's focused on women at the leadership of that industry. Uh, WeCode has uh, two components, uh, a training component, uh, but also a job placement or employment component. Uh, we have implementation partners, one of them is Moringa School, another one is Moraho Technologies, uh, that are providing uh, trainings in software quality uh, assurance or, and, and testing, the other uh, providing trainings uh, within the web and mobile applications development. At Marahu Technology, uh, we've taken an approach uh, to understand what the external market is actually asking for and requiring. And then what we've done is we've reverse engineered our training to fit the demand of industries. Basically, the industry wants dynamic learning more than it wants any particular one skill that they need at the moment because they know that they're, you know, in six months they're gonna need something else. The approach we've taken is saying, let's create an industry demand tailored training so that when the women come out of the training program, they actually fit what's required for the job. So that's kind of the core basis of our approach here is the competencies-based learning. Um, laying the foundation across 14 different competencies, only two of which are really kind of technical skills all the rest of which are looking at the head and the hands and the heart of, of how to do work in the tech, in the tech field. We call to me is like a home of knowledge because here we learn a lot of things, not only practical skills, but also moral behaviors. They teach us how to care about things, how to, like, to love what you do. We take that very seriously, that our goal is not to create trained individuals, but employed people. Uh, so on that note, we pursue the marketplace that's, again, outside of Rwanda for the business opportunity to come into Rwanda. So we're currently working heavily in the United States, in Canada, as well in, in many parts of Europe at the moment, including Germany. Uh, and we're receiving a lot of interest and uptake in organizations saying, listen, you have you've developed the skill that fits our demand. We're ready to come into Africa, ready to come into Rwanda. So our goal is to create a job for every person that goes through our training and we facilitate that. So we act as the connector between the talent and the demand. There aren't many software developers, period. But we're here to level the playing field because there are even fewer women. So gone are the days when women are left behind. It was a start to programming, basically. It's not every day that you get to learn something that challenges your whole way of understanding and doing things. The Moringa program specifically, in a period of about six months, you go from someone who cannot code at all and who probably has very basic digital skills to someone who can actually develop solutions for the market, right? Both so social and business solutions. Your mind is exposed to several things. It's exposed to, to, to different areas 
it's not about coding necessarily. You're also changing as a person and being transformed to be a great leader. So you become a highly, highly skilled person in Rwanda. And because of how scarce they are, you become super specialized. So very marketable, very employable. We didn't want to just do another training program for the sake of training, because uh, training by itself does not um, close the gap. But training and placement into employment um, begins to, uh, to, to work towards uh, closing that gap. I view the world differently now, like in terms of what I want for myself and what I want to achieve because more ideas keep on coming in. Technology is an enabler of uh, very many uh, fields, uh, be it um, medical, agriculture, um, education, finance. So ICT is an enabler for the development of the country. It's important, very important that also girls and women take part of that journey. That's the main reason why I joined WICOD, to see what, you know, what the technical world has, what it has in stock, and if I have a place in there.